Oh, come on, David, don't tell me you didn't, I don't know, crack a smile when you saw that Roy Morgan. Well, it's funny you say it's beyond all reason because, you know, the, the polling that we do is not how many people are voting for you today. That's just vanity polling. Um, the polling that we do is how many people are, are seriously open to, to voting for ACT. And at the moment, that's 28%. So the way we look at it, that's that's all the people that, are, that could get there. Um, and our job is just to work as hard as we can to make sure that we actually do earn their trust um, on election day. So look, it's, it's just one poll, like you say, but we actually look at, you know, what's, what's the possible vote we could get and how hard can we work for it? Yeah, and you've had a ton of coverage because every time you say anything, I mean, I don't know, Guy Fawkes and Nelson Mandela, um, mainstream media are just giving you tons of exposure, aren't, aren't they? You've, you've had a very high profile this campaign. Yeah, it's funny actually, Sean. Yesterday they uh, ran a story about me um, claiming uh, that the Maori chiefs who signed the treaty would be uh, ex supporters today. <laughs> and th there's some reasons for that. Um, but the funny thing was that I, I actually uh, claimed that uh, in February. Um, but I said it in Maori, so the um, the mainstream media... Uh, so they missed it. it. Okay. Hey, look, the other thing that strikes me, uh, David, we clearly have two major parties, or what we traditionally considered our major parties, because, you know, things change. Um, change is the only constant. We have two major parties both clearly hunting the centre at the expense of, if you like, the traditional extremes of their political position. Um, and, and it is quite clear that National and the pledge card not mentioning co-governance and a number of other things, it is quite clear that National is studiously going to stick to the strategy of not going off certain middle ground issues um, and that Luxon has no problem with being painted as boring and centrist, that actually gives you a lot of room to move, doesn't it? To be politically creative and appealing. Well, it's it's actually puzzling. I mean, we, we know that Labor can't uh, run on their record because New Zealand's got some real challenges right now, to put it mildly. Mm. Um, but what's interesting is that the Nats seem to be uh, hugging as close to the centre line as possible. Uh, and trying to just cover Labor. Now, if you look at their tax policy, I mean, Labor could easily have released that tax policy. Um, and even then, there seem to be some difficulties around double tax treaties and so on. So, you know, what I would say is that people need, people know that we don't just need real change. We, uh, we need real change based on some values. And they are that we can make a difference in our own lives, not be treated differently based on our identity, um, you know, be responsible for our actions if they're bad, um, but also be proud and rewarded for our actions if they're good. I mean, that basic idea that we can make a difference in our own lives and the lives of those we care about, that's, that's what's missing here. We're far more focused on who made a difference, what was their identity, um, and uh, then if it was good, we'd take it all off them, and if it was bad, they get a state-funded minder, which mm. is Labor's latest announcement this morning, that you get wraparound support uh, mm. if you're a criminal. Well, that's all very well, um, but what about the victim? I had a fascinating conversation with Chris Trotter on Monday morning, and he said, actually, um, don't be a bloody snowflake, Sean, get over yourself. This is what politics used to be like. And it is a more raw, visceral... Within certain guidelines, uh, I don't know, a more real kind of politics. And, of course, we've got a lot of journalists who haven't covered a lot of political campaigns saying, oh, it's the nastiest campaign ever. In truth, I'd say, David, and I'm interested in your thoughts, this is a rather lacklustre election campaign where largely the results are already known and it's quite hard to whip up any real interest in it. Oh, yeah, look, I'm, I'm partly sympathetic to you, Short. I had a journalist call me up the other day and they said that um, Hannah from the Disinformation Project had been in touch to say that, um, you know, they were very concerned um, that this heckler over the fence might make people feel unsafe running for office and it was, part, it was eroding our democracy. 
Um, and I said, well, sure, but, you know, I, I think if you go into politics, then you, you, you face certain challenges. And they said, oh, but, you know, doesn't this make it harder? I said, look, you know, I've got MPs in my party. You know, Nicole McKee, she's openly said that um, the, the father of her child died the week before she gave birth. Now, that's a tough week. You know, Karen Chua was a ward of the state, uh, looked after um, by the child, youth and young, and young persons at the time, SIPs, um, wasn't great. I've had MPs who have uh, battled surgery, had challenges uh, with their kids. I, I mean, these are people that deal with everyday life before, after and during when they're in politics and you're worried about a heckler. Um, and then she said, oh, but, you know, how would you feel um, if, if somebody was heckling one of your MPs like Karen Chua? I said, I would be fearful for the heckler, you know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think there's this bit of a sense that candidates and, and members of parliament, um, you know, should be somehow, you, you know, unable to, to deal with, um, uh, you, you know, hecklers. I, I think we should. But I also feel that, um, you know, when it crosses over into actual violence, yeah. that is the absolute And that's line. what Trotter said. He said you'd throw your egg and you get thrown out of the meeting. And that's the drama of it. That's the theatre, and everyone knew how it rolled, right? Well, I don't. I don't think you should throw eggs at people. I mean, I just oh, you know, on. just the odd egg. Come cost, on, just the odd egg, David. Sure, sure, and it's a cost of living crisis. Have you seen the price of dry cleaning? Yeah. <laughs> All right, the price of dry cleaning, not the price of eggs.